Welcome to another edition of Uplifting Interviews with Total Strangers. I've got a stranger on board who will be uh, unrecognized and undeciphered and um, will not be seen on camera. <laughs> and he's a great guy. He's an executive chef and he's an army vet. I applaud you. Thank you for serving our country. And I'm, I'm glad uh, you came out and not totally unscathed, I'm sure, but um, we, got, we got our nicks and bruises. Yeah, and you were telling me this great story about. Um, the, one of the guys you work with, you, you spent, what, a month, you said? I spent and, about a month, month and a half with him, uh, completely silent in a small operation in uh, Afghanistan. And uh, I didn't know the guy, really. I didn't really talk to him very much. Uh, we obviously wouldn't talk at all the time. And I actually met him at a uh, an airport lounge uh, months after we were both done. And uh, But you recognized him? He or recognized no. me. Oh, he recognized he you. He recognized me. He recognized my tattoos. And uh, he walked over to me and introduced himself. And uh, after that, we've been working together ever since. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> so um, that was a sad situation being over there in Afghanistan. Um, you know, it. it is what it is. And uh, you don't join the Army to not do what you're told. Right. So situation, they just they tell you what to do. You just shut up and do it. Right. And uh, that was completely fine with us. Like, we had no problem with that at all. I mean, the situation sucked, and uh, a lot of really not great stuff happened, and a lot of us didn't come out the same way we went in. Um, but all we can do is just, you know, be supportive and, and help each other through it now. Right. And how did you get into cooking? Just always did. I didn't really know what else to do when I got out. I was good at it before I went in. Oh, yeah? Okay. And uh, I did, like, you know, as a teenager, as a line cook at, like, a family restaurant. And uh, when it was all over, I didn't know what else to do, so I hopped right back on the line and went straight back at it. Isn't it great to get paid for something you love to do? It's not like going to work. Yeah, exactly. You know? I always yeah. say if you love what you're doing, <laughs> I don't work at you'll all. never work a day in your life. No, I just, I go in, do my thing, uh, have a good time, lead some good people, uh, help some good people learn to become leaders on their own. And uh, just kind of preach that philosophy of like, like you're here to become a leader, and I'm gonna help you get there. And, uh, we use a lot of things actually that we learned in the military as far as like uh, training, coaching, and leading people. So it helps a lot. So, um, how are you today? Man, fucking fantastic. How I am. <laughs> there you go. That's the only way to be. Especially in the food business. I love to eat. My wife's a gourmet cook. She's from France. And I am a foodie. Uh, I should be a lot heavier than I am. Um, I'm actually too heavy, but... I'm working on it myself. Right hell, hell, hell with it. You know, I mean, I'm enjoying life. And and it's life is too short. You really have to enjoy every day and, and eat three meals a day, <laughs> which is the greatest. So now, as an executive chef, you have to come up with new and inventive ideas or recipes and things like that? Or mostly it's just managing... Well, uh, at, at, at this point, I don't think there's anything that we're going to see that's new in the near future. But it is fun to take um, take things you already know and, and modernize it, adjust it, um, really try to grow with the environment around you. Because the environment around you is not going to stop growing. Right. So you got to keep up with it at all right. times. So I have a question for you. What's the best meal you had in the Army? <laughs> or did you have a good meal? Oh, man. It was not the veggie omelet, that's for sure. The veggie omelet was the worst thing I've ever had in my entire life. What is it called? I'm sorry? Oh, it, it was a, the vegetarian omelet, the vegetable omelet, in the uh, MRE. It was the worst. It, it, everything about it was bad. And no one, like, when you, when you cracked into that thing, like... Was no it something that was already it. dried and you put water in it to make it better? Or what? Uh, not really. It was just, like, rubber. It was terrible. It was the worst. Uh, I like the... I like... I think there was, like, there was like a chicken stew type thing. It was like a chicken a la king thing. Uh -huh. That was actually pretty good. I don't know. We did, there wasn't a lot of great food. So the, uh, my, my favorite meal I had the entire time I was in the Army was during my OSA training at uh, Fort Knox. was when, uh, like, after... It wasn't, like, the best meal. It was the best it was the best situational meal. Like, something about after running for God knows how long and just having just your butt kicked all morning to uh, come in when the sun's still still down, still dark out, and uh, have like half a cup of tea, a banana, and a little bit of oatmeal. Right. Like something about that at that time was always the best 
best feeling meal of the day. Right, right. Well, for, for you, those of you listening, an MRE is uh, a slang for a meal ready to eat uh, that they give you in the Army that doesn't need refrigeration. It's something that you keep for weeks or months, I guess, in your backpack, right? Yeah, it is, and it's terrible. And it's terrible. Oh, but it's but, sustainable. But it's food. Yes, food. And, and I'll be damned if the tiny little hot sauce bottles were not the most <laughs> the hottest commodity in the world. <laughs> you could trade them for anything. Really? <laughs> just to get a little flavor. That's funny. Well, I remember um, hitchhiking around the world. At one time, I was starving. And I'd go up to a church and say, I want to mow your lawn for a few, bo- for a few dollars. And he said, well... Instead of that, here's a coupon to McDonald's, and it would be a hamburger, a single burger, fries, and a Coke. Oh my God! When you're hungry, that when, when is. When you're hungry, that is the most. That is comforting. Goddamn delicious. Because it's comforting, and Com- it's something you recognize. Right. And sometimes recognition and comfort is more important. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm happy to have you on board. I want to thank you again for serving our country. My my charity SOS has been on seven years and. It's my passion to thank veterans. I hope you enjoy the song. I'm sure you will when you watch it. And I look forward to staying in touch with you and doing some good things together. Absolutely. There's a, the reason you jumped in your, my car when you did. The reason I accepted the ride is I don't accept all of them. You know, especially if they're not a little bit longer. It's just like I want to create videos like we're doing here. I want to meet you. And a two-minute ride is not worth my time. <laughs> <laughs> so it is what it is. And uh, again, have a fantastic night and day in life. And and um, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks Thank for watching, you. everybody. If you like what you're not seeing but hearing, subscribe and share it with your friends. Be fantastic, everybody. Bye-bye.